Today I want to show you what I keep in my own homestead medicine cabinet and what's important to me. You'll see that I have a variety of remedies from prescription medications all the way to natural solutions. So come on along and I'll show you what we've got in our medicine cabinet. This is where I keep all of my homestead um, medication and just our family's medication. Anything that has to do with medical stuff is going to be in my own bathroom, not the boys' bathroom because I want to keep a closer eye on it. And um, right now, it's really messy. And so, my first job is going to be tidying it up and then I want to show you what I keep in my homestead medicine cabinet and why it's different from medicine cabinet of any other standard suburban home. I've got all of my medicines all organized um, for the most part. <laughs> Everything's put away and I'll do a quick little thing of that after I introduce you to what I have here before me. This is a sample of the things that I use frequently on our homestead. Some of it, it most of it's probably going to be normal. You're already going to know about it. If it's something that you already know about, then We'll, we'll move through that fast. If it's something that's a little off the beaten path, I'll try and explain it a little bit more. And you'll find that I'm very much middle of the road. I'm cool with using prescriptions. I'm cool with using herbs. I am cool with using stuff right in the middle. And so I think what we'll do is we'll start with the most uh, processed stuff, uh, prescriptions and artificial stuff and we'll move to the more natural. So here we go. I hope everybody likes the view of my Christmas jammies. These are my favorite. I wear them all the time and uh, I don't dress up for YouTube videos. So let's start with all the uh, most processed stuff. All right, starting with this. This is actually an ammo box and we got these when we were considering doing foster care because your medications need to be locked up in some sort of a box. Um, we decided that that wasn't for us right now, but I can still use this for prescriptions. Um, most people who have prescriptions know that if you fill them early enough, um, you end up with a very slight surplus um, of the medications that you normally use. And that's the case with me too. But I find that that's very helpful because just because I don't need something this month doesn't mean I'm not gonna need it in the future. And if medical care is ever difficult to come by, I wanna have a little bit in reserve. I'm gonna go ahead and be very transparent with what kind of medications I personally take and why, because I think it's important that us as homesteaders understand that not everything can be solved with aloe and oils, although a lot of things can. So it's not a sign of weakness to be taking anything that you need, and so I'm going to let you know what I use. This is a prescription. Uh, for my husband when he had some high blood pressure, uh, Tinolol, and we ended up not needing it, but we're keeping it just in case. Honestly, having something that can help lower blood pressure in reserve is a good thing to have. So we have that. 
We have a pill splitter just in case we need to be managing our dosing on our own without a doctor. This is emergency. All of this is emergency stuff. Okay, guys? All right, so don't freak out at me. All right. I use a powder and a cream that is nystatin. It's great for any kind of yeasty rashes and things like that, especially during the summer. And I've had this prescription filled a few times, so I have plenty of it, which is great. Then I don't have to go back to the doctor and get it later. I had a prescription for a lidocaine jelly a while back, and this has come in really handy. I had a kind of an urgent scenario with some hemorrhoids that became so inflamed that I needed to have a procedure done. And in the few hours between noticing that they got that bad and being able to get it reserved, uh, you know, managed, uh, the lidocaine really helped. So if you got it, keep it. So honestly, I can't even remember what this one was. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So this is Zofran. Zofran. I was prescribed for my migraines, but it's good to have for any uh, nausea. Sorry, it was in the generic, so I couldn't quite tell until I read what it was for. So having Zofran around, very important. I take sertraline and having an extra bottle of these just in case is very important because I take it every night. It's for anxiety and I need it. So I don't want to live without it. I want to have it in my reserves. More nice statin ointment. Um, and then I have multiple boxes of Imitrex. Imitrex is for migraines. And this only has nine pills in it. And it's important that I have those. So it's all stocked up. And then this is gabapentin. It was prescribed to me for pain relief after uh, my hemorrhoid procedure. So those are the things that I kind of keep in reserve. And if you are prescribed something, you may consider just keeping it in a lockbox for emergencies. There are some times when having an older prescription is better than having none at all. So we keep it all locked up nice and safe where the kids can't get to it, not that they have any desire to do it anyway. All right, now, so we always keep extras, and I do recommend that other people uh, keep extras as well. Let's move on. You may be able to argue that this isn't exactly a medication, but we use electrolyte drinks, um, specifically Gatorade, frequently because we have a tendency to get dehydrated. And this helps in rehydrating, helping with nausea and stuff like that. And it's definitely not on the natural end. It's, uh, if you wanted to make something natural, some salt and some sugar and some water, and that'll get you rehydrated. We use things like sunscreen. This is just a little sample too, but we actually have multiple different sunscreens during the summer. You need to protect your skin from Sun exposure, I mean, managing it with also knowing that you need vitamin D. So, but those ears, they get burned. I mean, this little empty spot up here, that gets burned too. So if you don't have a hat, sunscreen. We keep pain reliever and fever reducers, both acetaminophen and ibuprofen in children and adult form. I also know the equations like if I run out of kids and my eight-year-old needs to take adult, I know how much I can give him. So I can do that. I, we have a tendency not to use acetaminophen as much, not because we don't like it, but because we find it less effective for us. I'm not sure why, we just do. So yeah. Um, this is burn relief, but it's also numbing. This is good in case something pretty painful happens and you need to numb that area. It is solar cane, it's a lidocaine type spray. 
We don't use it very often, but we have had to use it in the past. We take different kinds of allergy pills. And we just do. I'm allergic to dust. You can't drink honey and tea to uh, rid yourself of a dust allergy because it's not pollen based. So, allergy pills. I recommend that all homesteads have hydrocortisone because it helps with all sorts of those mysterious rashes that happen when you're working outside and you don't know what you touched. It's a steroid cream and it helps to boost the skin into overdrive mode to help fight off the irritant. So uh, use it sparingly if needed, but hydrocortisone of some sort is important to have. Um, in sort of the same vein, um, my Conazol Nitrate Vaginal Cream and Athlete's Foot Cream are both antifungals and anti-yeast. These are very important to have uh, because yeast is hard to fight, especially when you are do doing sweaty work all the time. So we have this and I will even mix some of it, especially the Vagisil Cream, with some other like Aquaphor or Vaseline or one of my other more natural bases and use it in diaper rashes because sometimes it's a yeasty rash and sometimes it's not. So I've got that. And lastly on the more like artificial, I guess, or medical side or Western side, whatever you want to call it, we use Bacitrace and Zinc. And the reason we use Bacitrace and Zinc instead of a triple antibiotic is because number one, I'm allergic to sulfates. Um, but number two, it's, you can use it in more widely varied circumstances. You can put it on animals, whereas like the Neosporin with pain relief, you can't. And it's pretty gentle and it works really well. And we make sure we have at least a couple of tubes of this. So this is the more processed, um, controlled stuff that we keep around the homestead. And I feel like the difference between any other suburban home um, and us is that we treat hydration like it's medicine and we keep the prescriptions just in case of an emergency. Um, this is also icy hot, so we use that, but um, I forgot to mention it, but yeah. And we also, the, the other difference between a normal suburban house is that you might see a rash and just automatically put just whatever cream and not really know what you're doing. But with our homesteading family, we understand the difference between different types of rashes. If you know it's a contact rash, then hydrocortisone is the one that you're going to go to. If you know it's because you've been sweaty, then you're going to try one of the yeast or uh, fungal creams first. Um, so with that explained, let's move on to our neutral resources for medical treatment at home. We're on to the more neutral of all of my medical supplies and medications. Most of this is going to be for wound care and maintenance. So uh, let's just go ahead and jump right in. Kind of off screen here. This is my medication that I take every day. Yes, there is an antidepressant in each one of these days. Yay. But there's also iron, which my body lacks and I need to take it. Uh, vitamin C to help absorb the iron. There's vitamin B for energy and it also helps my headaches. There is magnesium, which kind of does the same thing. Um, helps with my muscles, soreness, and helps me to uh, avoid getting my migraines that I sometimes get. And there's also vitamin D because I find that I'm a little bit deficient in vitamin D. So every day I take these. The magnesium is more like every other day because my current bottle dosage is pretty high, but this is me because I am over 30. All right, let's move on. 
wound care is kind of what is in this package. So back here we have different types of germ killing stuff. We have rubbing alcohol, this is 50%, and this is hydrogen peroxide. Excellent for killing germs, um, especially if you've been exposed to something that you're not sure of just how nasty it was um, for cleaning up wounds. Um, it stings, but it'll get you clean. Um, as a side note, good on blood stains. Good for getting permanent marker out of things. Just so you know. I have a bag full of plastic gloves. They're actually just the food service gloves because I have a tendency to um, not like to use the ones that are hard to get on your hand. I don't know. But these help to keep your hands clean while you're working on wound care. We keep heat packs. We have a few of these and then we have several reusable heat packs. We have rice bags that you can microwave uh, for a minute, minute and a half and apply heat. There's also of course ice packs in the freezer. Um, and then we have these other heat packs that are kind of interesting and I've only used them a couple times because they're a little bit more of a hassle than we thought they would be. But they're still pretty cool. What they have is like a gel and some sort of a little nickel coin in there that when you snap it, it heats up the whole thing and it keeps it hot for a couple hours. And then to refresh it, you basically have to water bath it. Um, they're very interesting. Um, they're not currently in use because I have not reset them, but they're a pretty interesting thing to have around. So, you know, if you're looking for heat packs that are reusable, that might be something that you might want to consider. Heat packs are great for muscles, and I use them frequently. Uh, back in wound care, this is my kids like a little first aid bag but I went ahead and stuffed it with all of our band-aids that I could find loose and there's also gauze pads uh, for packing wounds stick to itself tape because I um, my body reacts to adhesives and just an ace bandage in here variety of different band-aids because I have five children and they are dangerous. We also have bulbs. We also have a bulb syringe. We actually have two of these. Um, three if you count the one that we use for ear cleaning. So two are dedicated for nasal suction. Um, the other one is for ears. But very important when you have kids and honestly it's just a good thing to have around. Speaking of kids, pediatric enema. We have had some kids that have had trouble and when you need an enema, you don't want to have to go to the store to get an enema. You want to just have the enema. So this is a saline enema. It does have, um, let's see, let's read it. Diabasic sodium phosphate and monobasic sodium phosphate, which are laxatives. And, but it's fairly neutral. It's not exactly a high-end prescription and it's not exactly natural, but if someone's having some problems, you've already got it in your stash. Of course, thermometers, the tweezers for emergency removals. Um, if you don't know how to remove a tick, please get a video on how to remove a tick. You want to know how to remove a tick before you have to remove a tick. Okay, thanks. Um, I have two thermometers. I hate both of them, but they work. I have a sneeze. This is all dusty. <coughs> they call us a homestead Kleenex. <laughs> that didn't get me 100 subscribers. I don't know what will. All right. I do use cloth pads and things like that, but for a backup and for also wound care, um, we keep a small stash of maxi pads. 
Um, my grandpa actually uh, hurt himself pretty bad, I guess, back in the day. And they didn't have anything else around, so they just packed him with maxi pads, opened it up, and put it on his cut and got him to the hospital that way. But maxi pads will absorb blood, man. Use this in an ace bandage and you're set. But it's also good for emergency anything. All right. Along the same lines, we have a pack of um, Chuck's pads or puppy pads. I'm not going to unfold this one because I will never get it folded as perfectly as it was. Excellent for cleaning up spills, laying down when you're doing something messy, soaking up any kind of liquid that you can come up with, etc. And then Q-tips. Not for ears. We mostly use them for ears. When you live on homestead, your ears get so dang dirty. And so, yeah, we use Q-tips in the ears. Somebody sue me. All right, so of these things, what I think is different between a homesteader with these healthcare supplies and any old suburban mom, we know that wounds and rashes and injuries are much more likely to happen on a homestead simply because you have more risk. You have metal fencing, you might get scratched. You've got chickens, you might get pecked. We've got all sorts of things that could happen. You're out working in the woods. You're probably gonna get a tick on you at some point. Um, things need to be cleaned. Your muscles ache. And simply just the knowledge of how to use these things is probably a lot stronger in our homesteading family than it is in any other suburban family. So we also recognize the need of keeping it somewhat organized, although I admit I'm not so great at that, but so that you're not looking for the band-aids when you cut yourself, so that you know where they are. If I had to add anything to this, I would add some butterfly closures and possibly some more other like wound care things. But as it is, this gets us by pretty well. All right, so let's go over to our more natural side of things and uh, kind of wrap this up. All right, let's get hippie with it. I love using natural remedies and I use them first whenever I possibly can. If it's gonna work naturally and I can avoid using my other stuff, I will absolutely do that. So let's first go through some of the things I have here on hand. And I'll also mention a couple things that I don't have on hand because it is winter time right now. All right. Should have spread this out tall to short before I started this part of the video, but Kind of fun to see me rearrange things, right? Right? All right. So number one, and this is just a sample. My actual aloe is behind me, but I have multiple aloe plants. Aloe is amazing for burns and with all the cooking we do and the sunburns that we do get, aloe is a very important part of our homestead medicine cabinet. Um, if you've never used aloe before to treat a burn um, and you've only used the stuff in the tubes, this burns less. <laughs> the ones in the tubes usually have some alcohol added. Uh, if you can find one without alcohol added, awesome. But if you can't, um, get yourself an aloe plant. They're ridiculously easy to care for. This is actually one of the babies of my grandma's plant that has been having babies for like longer than I've been alive. All right. What you do. And this is my kids, so I'm not going to snap off, but you just break off a piece and open it up and the inside is all gooey, gelatiny kind of jello texture. You squeeze it and rub it wherever the burn is as quickly after the burn happens as is possible. And um, it helps to cool and relieve and make the skin irritation to get better quickly. All right. Um, on the topic of skin, I have another video where I explain what this is, but this is a balm made out of beeswax, coconut oil, 
cocoa butter, and then in this one I did put a tiny amount of honey. I have a very light scent to it, kind of chocolatey honey-ish. It's actually really nice. This is amazing for pretty much any skin problem that you have. Uh, chapped lips, because it's it's fine if you eat it, it's not going to kill you. It's all natural. Um, dry skin, I get ridiculously dry elbows and I have no idea why. Um, it's great for kids who have eczema and hate the feeling of lotion because of the alcohol in lotion. It doesn't burn. So uh, definitely check out that video. This is something new to me and I have not used it yet and I'm excited to try it. Okay. This is, these are corn silks and they came from a corn, it smells like corn, that we grew this year. There's only a little bit of corn silks left and I dehydrated them and stuck them in here because I had read that it's good for bladder infections. And the idea is that you steep it like a tea and drink it and it helps to uh, purify the bladder. Now, here's my thought. Honestly, what's probably helping is the water. But if drinking corn, um, corn silk tea helps get more water in you and flush that urinary tract infection out, awesome. Uh, another great remedy for that is cranberry juice without sugar if you can manage it. All right. Now, in the, kind of in the same vein here, elderberry. It's very important to manage um, your foraging correctly when you are doing elderberry. And I will admit that getting all of the little stems off is a pain in the derriere. But it's very important to get all the stems off because the stems are toxic and you can only use the berries. You can only use the berries cooked as well. So these are dried, but you cannot eat the fresh berries. Um, and personally, I wouldn't even eat the dried berries this way. What you do is you reconstitute them with water and boil them and add whatever you want to make it a nice syrup and drink it. It helps to helps with your immune system and we kind of have some elderberry stuff whenever we're just not feeling so great and it helps. It might go back to a little bit of same thing with corn silk is getting extra fluid in helps your body to manage better, but there might be a secret behind it. Either way, it definitely helps us. And so does grape juice that I process here at home. We've given the kids grape juice after they've had a stomach bug or a particularly nasty respiratory virus and they're better the next day and it's really weird because I really didn't expect that to happen but it did. So kind of mysterious and awesome at the same time. If it works I'm all for it. Speaking of if it works I'm all for it. Lots of essential oils. Um, we have a lot of essential oils. I honestly use most of them just because they smell nice, but this one is called On Guard and I, it's from doTERRA, but I think Young Living has one that's like Thieves Blend and it's all sort of, sort of similar, kind of citrusy, cinnamony. Um, matter of fact, it even lists the uh, protective blend on the back. Shall I read it to you? Wild orange peel, clove bud, cinnamon leaf, cinnamon bark, eucalyptus leaf, rosemary leaf. So all of those um, are, they help to kill germs. So if I know that we've been in a place that are, we're more likely to have shared germs, I might put this in like the bath water um, and get us cleaned up again. Could be just that the bath is washing the germs off us. Could be that this is helping. Could be both. Smells great. Helps you to uh, clear your nostrils if you're feeling congested. Awesome thing to have on hand. Same with other essential oils. Feel free to research that on your own because I don't push anything and I don't sell anything. All right. This is Arnica. This is one thing that I will push and sell if I could, but I don't own Arnica except in this. So you can't have mine. So I'm not going to sell it, but I will push it. Arnica is a plant, kind of like aloe is a plant, and the gel in Arnica um, helps with bruising. 
It is the coolest thing now. I will say this does have alcohol in it. So if you've got an open wound, it, it'll sting. So maybe look for the cream. I think there's a cream too. But Arnica gel is amazing for bruising. When my kids bonk their heads on stuff, or if you sip your toes on things, or if your muscles just hurt so bad, or heck, anything. How many times do you get bruises? So this really helps us. I use it a lot. I notice that the bruising goes down maybe like in half the time that it would otherwise, which is great. I will definitely take a reduction in pain with Arnica. And it's all natural, so fancy. This is um, a homeopathic remedy, which is Arnica also. This is the kind that you eat uh, or pop in your mouth or however you want to call that. Arnica Montana, um, 30C, and it's, you just kind of like let it dissolve in your mouth and it helps with, um, it says relieves muscle pain and stiffness, swelling from injuries, and discoloration from bruising. Basically it helps move the blood around and help you get back to normal. Um, I really like having this for things like back aches from traveling and, or not traveling, but carrying things around and lifting and all of that stuff. Um, I have this Bug Soother. It's a, it's actually a natural one. Every area of the world is going to have a different bug spray that works best for them. And I will tell you, when I lived in Alaska, I absolutely used the most vile chemical on me in order to keep those mosquitoes off. And I would 100% go back and do that today if I was in Alaska. Being in Iowa, I have learned that Bug Soother is the best for the bugs that we have down here. And you know what? It is ridiculously natural. It has lemongrass oil and a hint of vanilla. Deed free safely protects you, children and pets when used as directed. It repels mosquitoes and black flies. And honestly, yeah, the flies hate this stuff. So we use this when we're gardening and being outside and foraging and it's amazing. Right. Next, honey. This is local honey. We use it for any um, sore throats. You can just mix it with some lemon juice or in tea or straight or whatever. Helps with sore throats. It also helps um, to, let's see, when you, it helps with allergies if you have outdoor allergies. I don't have al outdoor allergies. Um, but it does help if you've got outdoor allergies to uh, expose yourself in small doses with raw, natural, local honey. Um, honestly, honey is also uh, cleansing and helps to fight infections and, and antibacterial. So if you don't have the other stuff, go ahead and try some honey butter. Um, last that I have a prop for is baking soda and I use this on like everything it's not just for cleaning and cooking and stuff like that um, this is my absolute go-to thing for bug bites um, bug bites bee stings and like prickly rashes that are caused by like toxins getting on your skin um, if I'm not really going to use my hydrocortisone for it. I'll go to my baking soda and make a paste um, first. So you basically just get baking soda and a couple drops of water and mix it up and apply it to whatever sting or bite you have and it helps to draw out some of the venom and it makes it more tolerable, less painful. Um, if you've got breast milk, you can make a more potent one too. Um, I usually have babies. So I usually have a little bit of breast milk hanging out on my person. So instead of using water, you can just express some breast milk. Awesome stuff. All right. I told you I wasn't. I was a little bit hippie-ish. All right. Some things that are not here right now, mostly because it's winter, are um, plantain. Plantain is like a little weed that grows outside. And it's great, sort of in the same vein that the baking soda is, 
in that you can use it as a poultice. I've actually <laughs> chewed up plantain and kept it in my mouth and then spit it into my, my hand. My husband probably thought I was insane. My, my husband hooked himself with a fish hook and it was pretty nasty, but we wanted to keep fishing so I grabbed a plantain, chewed it up and spit it out and I plastered that on him and it honestly, it was great. It reduced the swelling right away. It stopped the bleeding and I, we were able to finish our fishing trip and he didn't complain of any pain the next day or anything. So that was great and totally weird. So I'll do a little wrap up on my medicine cabinet and uh, see you in a sec. healthiest homesteads are going to recognize that health is on a spectrum. You can't just rely on seriously natural stuff and you can't just rely on seriously unnatural stuff. Honestly, I don't really know what the right word is. Pharmaceuticals? Yeah. You've got to be able to work on that spectrum. You have to be able to say, this is minor. I can use this. Or this is serious. I need to go to the emergency room. You have to have knowledge of different conditions. You have to have experience treating them. You have to make a few mistakes, but hopefully not big ones. And that'll help you to learn what you need in your medicine cabinet. Another thing I'll note is that I'm not a veterinarian, but I do know a thing or two about the animals that I've cared for because once we get the animals that we're going to care for, I do in-depth research about what kinds of things are most common for these types of animals to go through. Chickens have a tendency to get bumblefoot, which is infections of their feet on the little soft pads. They can also get sauerkraut, which is kind of like indigestion for chickens, but worse. They can get respiratory uh, illnesses. They can get fowl pox, which is black spots that cover their comb and their waddle. Um, they can become egg bound, which means the egg cannot pass. They can get coccidia. They can get all sorts of different things, right? And so the best thing for you to do when you have an animal or multiple animals is to research the heck out of every condition that they could possibly get. And then if a medication is something that you can have on hand to treat them, have it on hand. If it's something that you're going to need to be able to get short notice, know where you can get it. Know where you need to go and how to treat that illness for that animal. Because we're entrusted with these animals. We need to be ready for that. So for my chickens, I know that I can use my bacitracin zinc for any infections. I know what to look for in bumblefoot and when to intervene and when to just let it go. I know how to treat frostbite and when I need to treat it and when I can just let it go. I know what to look for in their calcium needs and what bloody poop means and what the shellless eggs or cracked shells or egg eating or any of these other things mean in my chickens. So if you've got, honestly, if you got like cows and goats, you're probably not watching me looking for advice because you're a little further along than I am. But when you're in charge of an animal, you need to make sure that you have things ready for them. So that was not explicitly covered in my homesteading medicine cabinet because I'm not a vet. But I do have a lot of stuff that can help treat my chickens if they get sick. I know what to do and the uh, knowledge is there. I definitely recommend that if you are a book person, get yourself a vintage at-home healthcare book. Um, I do specify vintage because it feels like lately there's less um, medical community wants to provide care for you 
and know that they're providing care for you the best that they can, but that also means that you're less culpable for your own health. And so that's why I recommend an older book because honestly, colds are the same as colds have always been. Broken bones are the same as broken bones have always been. But it's harder to find an at-home healthcare guide that's modern. So look in secondhand stores, look on EBA, um, just for first aid type stuff. If you've never taken a first aid or CPR class, definitely please take one. Um, fire departments sometimes have them. Or, I mean, honestly, at the very least, do a YouTube video on how to take care of different things that might happen. If you have barbed wire on your property, look up how to manage scrapes, whether you want to make sure that you have tetanus shots or not. Um, if you know that you're going to be working with manure, make sure you understand cleaning your hands uh, to avoid E. coli. If you're going to be canning, make sure you are using whatever comf whatever process you're comfortable with to avoid uh, botulism uh, poisoning. Cater it to your needs. So I hope that you have enjoyed me teaching you a little bit about what I personally keep in my own homestead medicine cabinet. I hope the video didn't go like ridiculously long. It probably did because I know I like to talk. Um, Stay tuned after the feature for a small presentation on your spiritual medicine cabinet. So in this bonus feature of this week's video, I'd like to touch base on what you should be keeping in your spiritual medicine cabinet. Now, I'm going to first acknowledge that not everybody has the same spirituality. Some of us feel like spirituality is not our thing. Um, please take all of this with a grain of exercise salt. See what I did there? All right. Um, for those that don't know, I am Catholic. I became Catholic when I was 19. Before that, I was Protestant and among the time that I was a Protestant Christian, I kind of wavered back and forth in my beliefs and understanding of the world. And so I've had a little dabble in pretty much everything. So um, I believe that God wants our spiritual health to be foremost. And just like in medical health, prevention is better than the cure. So making sure that you're able to attend worship, whatever that looks like for you, um, on a regular basis is very important. If you're not able to attend with other believers, then being able to worship in your home, um, in your heart, in your own space is very important. And that's why you'll notice that I have like, I don't know if you can quite see it, it's out of frame, but I have religious images everywhere and that is because I get so distracted with life that I need a constant constant reminder that God is with me at all times so here's what I have in my kind of emergency toolbox it came in really handy around March of what was that 2020 so um yeah this was really helpful so this is a nice little hymnal that we have. It has lots of different songs and readings from one of the years of uh, the Catholic Church, but not all of them, but so helpful in any case. Um, it has all sorts of songs in it that my kids know and love, and when we were in a place where we could not go and be with others, we have a full set of these and we could sing at home. I also recommend having a well-used Bible or whatever religious book you use. Um, I have mine tabbed and noted and for Catholics we have readings that correspond to the day of the year and of 
the cycle of the years too. And my Bible actually does have um, a little table in the back that would show me on what day, what would be being read most of Sundays and at weekday readings. So having a Bible or whatever religious text you use, very important. Um, any special devotions that you do uh, for Catholics Rosaries are one of the more common ones. Also Chapel of Divine Mercy, um, and there's, there's a lot. As a Protestant, probably one of my um, personal devotions would have been to have specific times to say specific prayers of thanksgiving, gratitude, supplication, etc. Um, as a Catholic, I have blessed and exercised holy water and uh, blessed and exercised salt. Uh, fun fact, you can use the salt when you want. You can use it to bless your property or you can cook with it. Con all consuming holiness. So many bad puns. I have a beeswax candle. Um, regardless of your spirituality, light brings forth health. And if you are feeling unwell spiritually, lighting a candle and allowing yourself to come back to your spiritual wholeness is a blessing. Uh, beeswax candles are particularly holy because of the purity of the beeswax that was put on. Um, your pastor's phone number. You need this for in your spiritual medicine cabinet because he's a doctor. All right. And uh, lastly, and also just because I think this is pretty cool, I have this wonderful crucifix that was given to us at our wedding by my mother-in-law. And it not only serves as our daily reminder of Christ, and all that he sacrificed for us, but it's also kind of cool because it slides up and you can set it in here. And in here it has what to do in case of an emergency. It says after you call an ambulance or whatever, you call the priest. And it has a whole little pamphlet on how to set things up. Um, but it comes with these two super cute little candles that you can stick right here and here when you unwrap them and a little cotton cloth for anointing and uh, you can use any kind of oil that you have at home vegetable oil for anointing because the priest will bless it so this is actually a pretty cool thing to have in my spiritual medicine cabinet and if you are Catholic, I recommend that you get one or make one or something. I'm going to have the hardest time trying to fold this thing back up. Just because I'm on camera. Our spiritual health is very important. And don't neglect it. Um, and when you think you're really healthy, that's when a sickness will spring up and surprise you. And I feel like it's the same with spirituality. When you think that everything's going so smoothly and there's no problems whatsoever and you're just very peaceful and content and you start to kind of neglect God and neglect your spiritual health, that's, that's when it pops up. So be prepared. Have all your remedies around. And lean heavily on Jesus. And, uh, May God bless you. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. My loyal viewers, I hope to see you guys over on Instagram. And let me know what you thought of the video. And if you would add anything to the medicine cabinet, whether physical or spiritual. Or... God bless you guys. And I'll see you next week. Good.
Today I'd like to talk to you about what you might find in a homestead medicine cabinet and most per specifically what we have in ours. So allow me to uh, introduce yourself. 